some way to listen to my iPod in my car. Yeah, Rick, I'm sure you do, but you're too lazy to get a job and get one of those new cars that have a hookup for your iPod. What am I going to do? Would you like to listen to music in your car from your iPod, even if you don't have a hookup? Well, yeah, isn't that obvious? Well, you're in luck because I've got a product for you. Hmm, what is it? It's a tape player adapter for your iPod. How does it work? Well, I'm so glad you asked. You see, it corresponds perfectly to the specification of the adapter design pattern. As defined by the much loved and much hated Gang of Four book. You see, the tape player, or the client, as one might say, will request data from the adapter, and that would be the tape thingy that's playing. The tape will receive input from the iPod, or the, the adaptee, and convert it with machinery and some other sort of magic and send it straight to your stereo. Hmm. Well, sounds good. And it's all yours for the low, low price of $19.95. Wow, that sounds pretty reasonable. Why don't we try it out on your automobile? What do you mean? You know, let's go and try it out in your automobile. You know, see it in action and in your fine driving machine. Um, well, my car doesn't have a tape player, <laughs> just a radio. Well, wouldn't you happen to know we've got a lovely AM adapter for your car right here. Same solid design pattern principle, same low, low price. Well, <laughs> we got the same problem there too. My car doesn't get AM radio, it just gets FM. That car must have cost you like a whole week's allowance. Sure it did. Shows how much you know. I haven't gotten an allowance since I was 16. So my parents owe me like a couple of thousand dollars worth of back allowances. I'll be able to get a new car, Juliet. You mean a less old car? I'll take one of those adapter thingies. Heck, I need one with my new car. <clears throat> um, less old car. Oh, I'm sorry. It doesn't really work. It's just a display model. It doesn't work, just like this car, and you. Ouch. Ouch! She got you good. Are you still there? Interesting existential question. Oh wait, uh, does that mean you want me to leave? Oh, sure. Uh, I just need a ride downtown. Can't help you there, cowboy. <laughs> In the example we just described, we talked about a product that would allow a person to send a signal designed for a specific device, an iPod, to another device such that the tape player would be able to play the iPod. This is an example of the adapter design pattern. With adapter, our goal is to create a way for different objects, like the iPod and the tape player of the example, or two Java objects perhaps to interact with one another even if they have incompatible interfaces. In the example, we didn't have the option of hooking up the iPod directly to the car's audio system. Had the car contained a tape player, using the tape adapter would have been a way of allowing data to pass between these incompatible interfaces. This is a problem that pops up an awful lot when you're reusing code, especially code you find from different sources. Different people come up with different interfaces for their programs. It's that simple. With an adapter, we've got two things we want to work with each other, but their interfaces don't mesh. By using this intermediary device, we can get them to talk to each other. That's the adapter pattern at its simplest level. <laughs> The adapter design pattern has three main parts, the client, the adapter, and the adaptee. The client is a class that wants to get some piece of information or call some method in the adaptee, but it cannot because it's not using the right interface to do so. For example, let's say that the client wanted to call some method B 
in Adaptee but wasn't doing it correctly. That's where Adapter comes in. Adapter, the Adapter class, that is, is going to contain an instance of Adaptee. And there will be a method A in Adapter that the client will be able to call, which will in turn call method B. Let's continue with the idea of the tape adapter as an example of the adapter design pattern. Look at a quick code example. So as you can see here, this is not going to compile. The tape deck class is not being called correctly by the tape adapter. So if we implement the adapter design pattern and add the tape adapter fixed class, they can communicate with each other. It's also worth noting that tape adapter fixed to in this example does the same exact thing as the tape adapter fixed class, but with inheritance instead. All right, here's a test on your comprehension of the pattern. I have three quick questions for you. Mark down the answers on your questionnaire. We'll tell you the answers afterward. Here we go. What are the names of the two classes that want to communicate with each other but cannot? The client call the adapter class true or false. True or false, the adapter class contains reference to an object of the adaptee type. All right, here are the answers. For number one, the two classes that just want to get along are client and adaptee. For number two, the answer is true. The client will call the methods it wants within the adapter class. And finally, the adapter does contain a reference to an object of the adaptee type. Thanks, and we return you to your regularly scheduled programming. And now for the final part of this lesson, the exercise. For this exercise, you are given two classes. The main class, which is the driver, and another class called some class. The main class is trying to make calls to non-existent methods in the sum class class. Suppose that these classes are just merely small subsections of a much larger system and that modifying the interface of either class's code is simply not an option. Your task is to implement the adapter pattern within this program such that the program compiles and runs without incident. Good luck and you might want to pause this video while you're at work. Alright, time's up. In case you were wondering what the answer is, there isn't one. It's a trick question. Just kidding. The way we went about solving this problem was to create a new class, which functions as the adapter class, that contains an instance of the sum class class, and has methods that correspond to the calls that we see in the main class. Then you just fill in the methods with calls to the appropriate methods in the sum class class, like so. We have to make sure to change the code in the client class to use an adapter instead of an adapt, and that just about does it. Hope you did alright, and we'll see you next time.